Do Christians believe in God because they evolved to? Welcome to Critical Thinking Scan, where we look at how you can think about any faith-challenging message and arrive at a biblical, logical conclusion yourself. I'm Patricia Engler, and today let's apply the seven checks of critical thinking, which we've talked about in earlier videos, to a common story you may hear regarding the origins of religious beliefs. This story, as I heard it in my first year anthropology class, goes something like this. Millions of years ago, ape-like ancestors slowly evolved into the first primitive humans. As these early humans struggled through the cosmic accident called life, they gazed up at the stars and searched for meaning. From there, according to my study notes, religion probably developed as a way to cope with agricultural uncertainties. When faced with problems beyond the control of technology or better organization, people tended to resort to magic or the supernatural. And this quest to control nature and explain the unexplainable and generally make sense of life allegedly caused the evolution of all religions. Or as my professor put it, God did not create humans, humans created God. Well, this claim is a core belief of secular humanism, the worldview which states that humans evolved to become the godlike masters of their own morality. And if humans evolved apart from God, the fact that many people believe in God must itself be because belief in God serves some evolutionary purpose. And this claim doesn't just show up in anthropology classes. You may also hear it in sociology or psychology or just popular culture. But is it true? Well, let's think about it. If I heard this story in class again, here's what I'd do. Rule number one, I wouldn't panic because God's word is true and truth fears no questions. Instead, I'd break the message down with the seven checks of critical thinking. Number one, check scripture. The Bible is clear that God created humans for relationship with him, so saying that humans evolved naturally and then invented God clearly challenges non-negotiable doctrines from scripture, which is check number two, check the challenge. Well, how about check three, check the source. If someone says humans evolved to believe in God, what do you think their worldview is? Definitely not God's word, so it must be man's word. And that worldview will affect the assumptions they use and the conclusions they reach, which will be helpful to keep in mind. Moving on to check four, check the definitions. Are there any key words here worth clarifying? Well, maybe religion. Many people define religion to mean worshiping some sort of deity, but the Merriam-Webster Dictionary also defines religion as a cause, principle, or system of beliefs held to with ardor and faith. And everyone has a system of beliefs to answer key worldview questions like where did we come from and why are we here and what happens after we die? So everyone, in a sense, is religious. And even the U.S. Supreme Court has recognized secular humanism as a religion since 1961. So by humanist logic, the religion of humanism must have evolved too. But I doubt any humanist would suggest that humanism must therefore be less true. Let's go on to check five, check for propaganda. Why might this message sound persuasive? Personally, I found it persuasive because a smart professor was very eloquently communicating it. But neither of those things are actually relevant to whether the message is true. What about check six, separating facts from interpretations? Well, the fact that we can observe is that there are different religions or worldviews. The interpretation is that religions evolved for various reasons. The word probably in my study notes indicated that this was signaling a possible explanation and not a definite fact. It's historical science, requiring assumptions about the unrepeatable past. A biblical way to explain the same observations of different religions is that God created humans, but because of sin, humans rebelled against him and invented their own beliefs. Finally, check seven is to double check for other faulty logic, but I think we've covered most of the potential fallacies by now. Though if I still had questions, I'd follow up on them by consulting God, mentors, and apologetics resources. So that's an example of how to apply the seven checks of critical thinking to a message from a real-world secular classroom. For more on how to think critically about any face-challenging message, you can access my other CT scan videos packed with tactics, tips, and tools that helped me as a Christian student at Secular University. Thank you for watching.
Hey, it's Patricia. Just wanting to let you know that if you like these videos, are on board to share the message of biblical authority, and want to give, you're welcome to help Answers in Genesis produce more content like this and equip more people to defend their faith by making a one-time donation or becoming a monthly supporter by clicking the link below. Thanks so much.